All right, so it is uh, Friday. It's the start of the weekend, and uh, oh, house is already squared away, cleaned up. That's done. So it's uh, 7:40-ish, and now trying to figure out where to go for today. Fly. Um, so uh, one of the projects I had in mind, I got a few things that need to get done. One, those beehives need to be set up. I'm getting activity at the swarm hives and I'd sooner get some of those set up before it's, uh, you know, so that I can actually move them into there, do it now rather than later. Um, I have this, uh, I need to look at my lawn tractor. I, I have a feeling it's a fuel issue on there. Um, so I'll have to take a look at that. And uh, right now I'm working on the scythe. So I got this uh, scythe here. I picked it up a while ago. But the problem with it was these, uh, what you would call it, they have these handles on there. I took them off now. And it's uh, a neat little design. But these slip around the the shaft. Um, I, You know, the terminology, I, I don't know it. Uh, and there's a wood piece that goes on top. A little metal retainer here and it, uh, the, it's a threaded end and it's, it's a left hand thread actually which is interesting but I'm just gonna tighten the these up a little bit so they fit around there just a wee bit nicer and I, I'm gonna modify them a bit to suit my purposes uh, but uh, I'll, I'll show you those when I get around to putting the handles on all right so I didn't need to do much but okay these are essentially all that you need so we have a a nut on here and uh, see this piece just they slide over like that and then the handle um, fits into the this piece here it's a little difficult to do when you're one-handed but and then yeah the nut goes on there now you can see there's a hex shape in there. Um, originally, that's this. This actually recessed into the handle, and I, I believe the idea was that you just turn the handle, and then you tighten it. Now there's a left-hand thread too. Now the problem is these were good, uh, right, good in there and seized. You know, it's an old piece, so what I had to, well, what I ended up doing, is I filed um, around and I sanded it now, but. And that way I can actually get a wrench or a or a ratchet on top of a, on this on this nut. So instead of using the handle to tighten it, because well, yeah, the wood can be strong, but it's just uh, when it sees like that, what's going to give first, the metal or the wood? Well, it only goes one way. So I figure instead I'll try to put a washer in here. Is what I'd like to do, and then. Uh, use that to press against the washer instead of the wood and then just create the tension that way and then I can set it tighten it and uh, just go from there all right so uh, handles are on uh, they are yeah a little bit different so they used to be you know flush with the nut but I brought them back and then I placed a washer under there and this just allows me to actually tighten them with a wrench or a ratchet um, instead of the handle itself but uh, you know what I'm put the I put the handles where I feel it feels comfortable and then like I don't I haven't used it excessively but it's now it's actually solid so I can actually <laughs> cut stuff with it um, it is pretty decent sharp so um, it does cut and I've been using it for the the chickens you know, I would go out in the back because everything is, is pretty tall there. Uh, cut a bit and then toss it to the chickens. You know, just go out in the evenings and do that. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. And then uh, I can always adjust the handles now too. So that's nice. And then, yeah, so there's one project off the list. Alrighty, so we're at the, over here, the old John Deere, the old 322. This is my workhorse. But she don't uh, want to start nicely. But she don't want to start actually. Um. And that's it. So uh, 
but yeah the keys turn you can hear the fuel pump clacking away but there's no fuel um if, i'm not a mechanic but i but i do know what mechanics do so there's no fuel coming through there um well there's fuel sitting on the bottom of the filter but it should be bubbling out and the fact that it's it ran good and um it, it fires up but doesn't hold it so to me that that's an indication of a fuel issue it was misfiring before but it also that's it misfiring but it also sounded like it was um it didn't have fuel as well it could be very well what it was and i have a feeling something's wrong with the pump that's my guess um but again like i said i'm not a mechanic i just know what they do um so you gotta try to figure that one out figure out where the fuel pump is on this thing and because and we can test it out too like i don't see nothing coming through the filter right it usually it, it you, you'll see it bubbling in there like you'll see the fuel moving i could always take the the ring off here or even better actually would be probably here um i could take that one off and um turn the key and there should be fuel flowing through it. If there's not, then I know it is a fuel pump. So, just, yeah, but I think it's pretty clear that it's not flowing. So, I'll go see where the fuel pump is on this thing, figure that out, and then maybe I'll have to call the old, old John Deere and see, see how much they want, like, want for one of those. So, but it's a nice thing about the Deers. They, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like Honda, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I got Deere and Honda. Um, you know, they're old machines. I mean, the Honda's in 87, this is a 90, oh, it's from the 90s. Um, but low, mile, uh, low, low hours on here, to be honest. I mean, I picked it up when it had 800 something on there. So, it's, you know, I, I, I the guy I bought it from, he used it to cut his airstrip. <laughs> he had a small plane. And that's all he uses for was to cut the cut the grass on his airstrip. So that's pretty neat. But yeah, the nice thing about these machines is you can get parts for them. They, I don't know. I, I respect the company who does that, who who uses the same parts generationally. You know, when something works, they stick to it. They don't always switch things around. And at least they can. Uh, at least you can still get parts for it. So we'll figure that out. See where things go, and then. Uh, Go from there. Maybe it's time for a coffee break. That's not a bad idea. Figure things out then. Alrighty, so coffee break was nice. Learn a bit of things, get everything in order. Um, so I phoned in for, well I got, I guess the deer, deer place, uh, phoned in for a fuel pump. What do they want for that? They want 318 for it. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, I'll think about that. So that's uh, that's steep, in my opinion. So I might just go uptown to the local Napa and uh, see if I can find something close enough for for cheaper. Ooh, <laughs> I'll be. I got irises. Now this is neat. So I gotta be careful. This this area is full of poison ivy. But uh, yeah, there we go. Nice stuff. It's not bad stuff. Like, I, I walk around the bush with flip-flops all the time. I don't really get the stuff. The moment you start, uh, what you might call it. But look at this. Beautiful. Um, it's just a wild iris here. A little shy, but. Have this little clump growing here. So that's, that's. I should cut back that tree. <laughs> I had another one, sadly, over there too. I saw it, but uh, foolish old me, I, I stepped on it when it cleared the area and uh, it didn't really bounce back. But you can see the, it was here. I don't think that, that's not it, but it, there was something here. I'm pretty sure it was an iris. Either way, a little surprise for today. That's that, that's a blessing, you know. You see flowers, you know. So it's so it's good. So what's up for today? I gotta put up beehives. That's one thing. Um, I would also want to set up my composter. Uh, I want to start that. 
and uh, figure out this fuel pump but yeah I'm gonna go pick out some spots we're gonna um, probably put down some you can probably take from there uh, some soil we don't have our what is it buddy <laughs> we don't have a we don't have our tractor right now but uh, well now we got a wheelbarrow it's uh, Oh, one of the great inventions of our time. Of our time. Great inventions by, uh, I don't know, I like it. Um, we can fill that up, get some soil there, dump it on the spot, cut it low, and then level it out, put a pallet down, get it all. I'll get these areas sh uh, uh, made up, and then uh, I will... Uh, some of these hives I can move myself. There's one I can't. The only one I can't is the yellow one. Why can you lift the rest but not that one? Well, it's because of the roof. Uh, there is no good spot to pick that up because of the way the shingles overhang. You really do need two people or a really clever contraption of sorts. But I'm, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I'll move some of these out and uh, find a spot for them. It would be nice to get them off the deck and then uh, actually get them on spot. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then uh, you see the birds are soiling them. But yeah, and the yellow one's got activity. That's one thing I had to. You can see all the bees on there. Why is there bees on there? Well, it would be funny if something actually moved in. I don't think so. Uh, but we're right in the dearth period. Uh, pretty much. Uh, most of the dandelions are gone, so. There's not a lot of nectar going around, and I put, <laughs> I forgot I did it, but I, I put frames in there, uh, honey frames, from one of the hives out there, uh, which in its own right, look, I, I don't mind, they can take the honey, they'll just put it back in the hive. I don't like that it might promote some robbing, but, uh, yeah, either way, if they clean the frames out, then I can just give those frames back to them, and they can fill it up with stuff later on in the season which is in its own right will be nice because frames are a premium over here either way we'll go find some spots I didn't have this planned out but we will find some spots and uh, start setting up some some hives alrighty so I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a warm day it's gonna be a warm one but uh, we're getting foundation set so I just uh, hauled in some gravel. I still had some when I, uh, that container over there, there was a last, two years ago I think, I uh, there was an old foundation in that bush. The people who built this place uh, had ambitions for a shop. I think that foundation was laid out in 76. Uh, it's written on there. Somebody put it in the concrete. And uh, yeah, it was all overgrown. Uh, they never built anything on there but I figured I could use the old footing uh, for those containers. That's what I did. They rest on one side each. I, I put my own pads in there, but I, I had to hold in some gravel. So uh, when I did that, they just dumped it in front of the container there. And uh, most of it went there, but you know, he always had a little piece on the ground, so that's where I got the gravel from. Two birds with one stone. I clean up my lawn while I'm at it. But I got the pallet here. And uh, yeah, so you can roughly see there's, you know, there's the three braces for there. And uh, it, where it sits is roughly level, but I just want to fill in so it's all one surface, so the wood contacts everything. Over time, it'll probably shift a little bit. Um, I'm sure that they've all shifted a little bit, but uh, I try to get this as close to level as possible. Um, but when I actually put the hive on there, then I level the hive again. And, you know, because it, it's always a little bit different, but as you can see on this one... Um, I do shim up posts and whatnot, and that works pretty well. So I'm just gonna lay down some gravel. We're gonna flush this out, level it, and uh, that'll be one. Now uh, I marked. I went around. I kind of marked, you know, with re like I've like to put another one there, another one there, there. I got two. I have uh, I have five over here right now. I have six hives that are ready to go, but. Who knows, maybe find another place for the sixth one. Maybe my parents want one. 
it's nice to have them around eh? the nice little hives it's not a bad idea I got a Dutch hive for some Dutch folks so who knows may I put one there but uh, yeah I'll get this squared away and uh, at least it'll be one foundation and then uh, go from there Alright, so I got one high setup. So all of that put in is uh, close to 50 minutes to get them all set up. But it looks good, it's nice. And uh, in all honesty, I, I wanted to get at least one setup just because these things aren't easy to move. So uh, it's just another spray day. Just started noticing that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know to get these. It's not so much the weight; it's it's the bulk of it. So that's why I got this furniture moving dolly. I got them at auction, so it was a nice find. I just saw it and like, and I like just clicked I'm like. So here's the hive. This is the first one that's uh, that's been set up. So yeah, I just leveled the foundation, and then yeah, you take a bit of time to get that all leveled out. But you know, if you have a good foundation, everything else. <laughs> follows you know everything needs a proper foundation and uh, yeah we just brought the hive over here and wheeled it on there and uh, yeah this is uh, the flat top model um, I guess it's, it's a bit of a test too to see how well it works and uh, yeah these are I just finished screwing the hinges in there I had to move the holes a little higher because I know there's there's no there's a stud up here but there's just plywood well, I guess there's two layers of plywood there. I guess there is a three-quarter piece if you go fur enough in there. But it's three-eighths, two inches of insulation, and then a three-quarter piece of plywood. And so these things, yeah, you know, you take your time to center it all. You want, it, you know, you set it up once and you kind of... They're, they're supposed to. These are bee houses, not hives. <laughs> so you can open them from the back. And... Oh, this one... This one will need some modification, but yeah, here's the, the business end of things. Feels sturdy. I like that, um, especially at 90 degrees. Doesn't want to tip over. That is um, the issue with that. Um, the 45 degree angle roofs. They look nice, but unless you have a load in them, when you lift them up. They get a little bit back heavy, and they they want to tip on you. If you don't have a colony in there, once the frames are in there, it's good. Um, but you got to be careful when you're first loading them up. Which is why I am going to. I will probably stop with 45s. I have made some. They're all sitting on the porch, but they're 35s, and they still look nice. I, I went with this just because it looks nice. And uh, yeah, just so far the weight on here seems good. I'll bet you the barn roof style is going to be cumbersome, but we'll see how that works as well. This one doesn't have a stop latch, 
Um, so if you see those, um, those blocks in the front of those, that prevents the door from opening. Uh, that one has it too. You can see them under there. They got the low blocks. This one doesn't. I didn't. One, I didn't put them on, and two, I didn't I, because I didn't know how it would go with the roof. And two, I think it kind of, I don't know, it takes away from the look of it. But I do have a kind of a a box latch, a little brass box latch that I plan to put on the in the middle on the interior of this. So I guess I can set that up, and then yeah, I'll go from there. I'm gonna see because yeah, I got these spots and that one, and I got two over there. You know, just at least if I could get at least two of them set up, I'd be pretty happy with that. At least I have, you know, space to grow now. And uh, at least, at the very least, I can at least get the foundation set up. And then, uh, you know, if I want to, I can always ask for help to move these things. It's a lot easier with two people. But again, I want to put this out here just, you know, it's, it's nice being able to know you can actually do it yourself. And it's, you know, it's... Uh, so you gotta figure these things out. You can't always be asking other people to do stuff for you. So yeah, in the meantime, see where things go. Questioning what all that activity is over there. I don't think that's all from that hive, to be honest. So I might tighten up that entrance there, make sure that they're not getting robbed. That's one of my concerns about them, but they're such a small colony. If I catch a swarm, I might actually add it to that and kind of combine them, but we'll see how it goes this season. So I'm not sure what's happening here, to be honest. Some of this stuff is new to me, but I don't know, you can see all the bees in the air there. So they're all coming out of that hive. Now that hive is very small. They barely scrape through the winter. So I'm not sure what's happening, but to me, if it was my guess, it looks like they want to swarm. It looks like... My guess is that they're absconding the hive. They said it's enough. We don't want to. We don't want to be here, and so they're all fleeing the hive. That's my guess. They want to find a better home. And it could be I don't know why, but hey, let's. I'm not sure. Let's just see where this goes. And <laughs> if it's swarming, then who knows? Maybe I catch it, and then I can install it in uh, in something else. Maybe I put it in this one, the one I just put up, so now we'll see where it goes, but it's interesting. It is definitely unusual, like I think this is swarming, would be my guess. But I'm curious to know where they're going to go, because they should be looking then for a branch and all going to park in there and, until they find another home. Which I'm kind of wondering because I know there's another swarm hive that I have very close by and there was a lot of activity over there So maybe they found another <laughs> Maybe they're moving over there We'll see So the activity is getting a bit more increased Now I'm kind of wondering if it's this hive that's swarming or if a swarm is moving in I Don't know There's a lot of activity at the front of the hive. That's my only thing a lot in the sky, so I'm very curious to know what's going on here. I'm not sure what these bees are doing, but uh, just curious to see what they're uh, what they're up to. All right, so uh, whatever was happening with the hive, it stopped. Now it looked like the bees all went out and then it all came back in. I don't know why. Uh, it, I, rem I opened the hive, it was all it was loud and then I opened them like five minutes later and it just got quiet and it's like, but I don't see them, didn't, it's not like they went anywhere. And I see them coming and going. So I have no idea what that was, honestly. Because I don't see no swarms around. I don't. I didn't see them up and leave. They were all around, and then they bearded on the entrance there, and then uh, they went back in. So, yeah. In the meantime, I got this one. This one's done now. Um, man, is it ever warm? It's. Uh, but I got the hinges in or the lid supports. So just finish that. So yeah, it goes to the back and just holds it see, like that. Can work in here. I like the the balance of it. It it works nicely. 
Um, it took me longer than I'd like to admit to actually figure out how those things went in. Because, you know, intuitively you think they should go uh, almost, you know, 45, but then I'm banging this piece into the lid and... I don't know, I couldn't find nothing about how to install these things, so... Yeah, it was kind of trial and error. I stuck them up with the thumbtacks and... <laughs> kind of like, well, this works. So, either way, they just... You know, closes, opens, very nice. Now, last thing I have to do um, for this to actually be done, done, is to uh, get a piece of jute cord, like I have over there. You see that piece of rope in the entrance, and that'll block the entrance, and then uh, you can open it when the time is ready for it to be opened. So that, um, yeah, I guess we should uh, continue on. Uh, set up another one man it's just it's just warm out here it's like over 30 i think it was it's, it was calm for a hot one but i should also at some point today i'll probably go uptown look into uh, those fuel pumps and uh i don't know i have to go in the garden too probably do some weeding at some point i gotta get on top of the crab grass quack grass see how things are doing and uh Start making a composter. Eh, there's things to do, but again, once you're stuck in this heat, it uh, it saps it out of you. But yeah, we're gonna continue on from here. Just about to put the lid on. Got this one squared up, leveled. Just uh, strike the level across. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. The, uh, I put, uh, there's three shims under there, so. I mean, that's how they all, that's how I fine-tune it at the end. Alright, so this hive is set up, ready to go. Um, and it's past, this is the 35 degree, um, lid that I was talking about, as opposed to the 45. And as you can see, it's standing by its own, which is great. Um, doesn't want to tip forward. Um, if you give it, it will. Like, you gotta push it a little bit, and if it'll catch momentum, I'm sure it'll fall. But if you're working in it, if you're careful, especially once the bees are in there, that's no problem. It will stand by itself. I, ju I just remember when I first installed that one, I had to put a... I actually have a rock on the bottom there. I had to... I put... I keep it there, so if it's ever empty, then I put it in there just to keep a kind of like a counterbalance but I think this roof looks pretty decent um it's a little dusty <laughs> but uh, you get a few little rains on there and should be good it's also this is the first time uh this is a double piece roof so I have all three pieces of aluminum um we'll see how it goes and yeah does, does it get hot yes it does but it doesn't seem to go I mean all conventional beehives have galvanized on top of them um I guess that's one advantage to the wood it does probably keep a little cooler but uh, keep in mind that there is two inches of insulation and the whole buffer of air in there. So it does seem to do pretty well. So that's two hives down. Uh, maybe we start on third. Maybe I go start looking at that fuel pump. Alrighty, so I was running errands uptown and uh, <clears throat> finally got the round to paying my mechanic. He wouldn't take my money for over a year. <laughs> Ongoing issues with the car. He didn't want to pay until it was done. Now it's done, so it's all settled. So it's good. Runs good. But I'm around and I'm checking swarm hives. Um, I'm just a ways down the road. And uh, this is an exciting one because... Look at that. That's a swarm. That's a real gift from God right there. Yeah. I can put the boxes up, but I can't fill them. He fills them, so... <laughs> thank him for that and uh, this is exciting uh, at some point we're gonna well we'll let him settle in there and then uh, might keep him in there for a day or two let him I don't know I, I could take him down tonight already wouldn't be a bad idea because they'll be oriented to this spot they stay I mean they should be already but uh, they'll they'll slowly file in there and uh, We'll come back at uh, at night and uh, take the box down, put them into a new hive, 
that uh, we set two up today this is exactly why and then uh, yeah we'll uh, <clears throat> kind of force them to reorient to that spot by covering the entrance and uh, we just now boosted our apiary by uh, <clears throat> by about half I don't know what is it percentage wise I don't know I went from two to three so this is exciting this, this is how I build my apiary I don't buy bees no more I let uh, <laughs> I let I let God determine how many bees I have and it works out for me so he's good to me so yeah we're gonna leave him be and uh, leave him be <laughs> But uh, this was the last box that I had to check, so uh, we'll head home and uh, I guess we might set up some more hives while we're at it then. Trying to figure out which one goes next, but uh, how you doing buddy? Enjoying your little nap? Want to help me move some boxes? No? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure where things, how things quite are. I looks like I caught a swarm down the road there, um, but I also might have something on the farm as well. There are bees in there, and they look a little more active than scouts. I'll say that. Um, so who knows? Maybe there's two. Maybe there's one. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I gotta put some more of these up, and. Uh, at least the days cooled down a bit and there's a bit of a breeze, so that's nice. i give you a little update on this one. Okay, so it's not the fuel pump. I took the fuel pump out of there and it looked like this was empty, but that's only because it was, you know, it's right full of fuel and then you don't see anything in there. And I guess if it's not drawing, usually there's bubbles in there, but it's only because the engine's actually using it and it's drawing more in there. But uh, I did test the pump, and yeah, it pumps fuel, so it's that works. It goes up. You know, I took that hose off. It pumps fuel out of there, and so I got something between something between here and you know the cylinders. I'm gonna guess it's something with the carb, so. That might be where I have to go next. Yeah, so uh, I'm out actually just getting gravel, a little bit of gravel. I'm setting up one of those hives at my parents' place. Um, I asked them if they want one. It's nice to have in the yard uh, if they want it or not. Uh, so uh, yeah, I saved the, the Dutch hive for the Dutch folks. But uh, as I'm getting gravel here, uh, I did a little bit of what I call squirrel gardening. And uh, I did this about two weeks back. And it's just, you take seeds, be a mix of whatever in this case it was squash butternut spaghetti probably some pumpkin in there too and uh, you just go around and you just plant and you forget about it uh, I do remember this hill though uh, look at that <laughs> that's just I don't know what comes out of it you'll thin it out to whatever it is and who knows what comes of it but that's just uh, that's squirrel gardening it's stuff that you didn't really plan for but uh, it works either way I figure if I'm going to be here anyways, actually there was something I did want to uh, point out. It's, uh, I, I forgot about it, but <laughs> it is here. So uh, I looked earlier today and there was uh, apples, uh, the apple grafts that I had put on, two of them were budding or sprouting. And uh, reminded me that, yeah, I also have some Plums out, and here's one of them. Look at that! That's uh, it was grafted. I don't know, two weeks ago. I got one here. It's it's not in the same state, but yeah, I don't know what the other ones will do. Uh, some of them are just booming, and the other ones not. I got one further out too. That is uh, that's also leafing out. So that's exciting, and. Uh, you know, we'll see where it goes, but you know, at least uh, if those take, then uh, you could have some very interesting fruit on there. You're just looking down because when you're walking through the forest, you gotta. I'm just trying to sidestep all the poison ivy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna get some gravel and then get that uh, foundation laid down. Oh, that is right. 
I don't know if, if that actually makes a difference. Maybe the moon's enough light. I don't know. It's dark. It's probably about 10. And I'm wrapping up for the day. The mosquitoes are getting... They're getting bad. <laughs> you get used to them after a while. Um, but yeah, I just... I planted some squash uh, a while back. Uh, four seeds to a hill. Direct sown. And 100% uh, germination. Hurrah! That means I had... Uh, was it three six plants um, that needed to go and I not the one to just kill them off so um, the ones I had back there two I moved to either side of it there was enough space and then the other four I just I had a patch of tilled ground yeah of course you can see but there was there's a patch of tilled ground here and uh, there's four in here so we'll see what comes of it and I don't know if I can turn this off see the lights <laughs> the fireflies are out. See, you don't often see this, but it's also what happens when you don't mow your lawn. You have to... When when you, when they like the tall grass, they don't care for the short stuff. I have not cut the grass this year, and, uh, well, <laughs> the mower's not running either, so... <laughs> we'll see when I get around to doing that. But it's quite nice. It's actually quite pleasant. So we for the mosquitoes. So, until next time, thanks for watching and take care.